Hello brothers and sisters, Pastor Chris Holman of Nine Line Ministries. It's a beautiful day. Well, most people might not think it's a beautiful day. I think it's a beautiful day. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I love a soft summer rain, and that's what we have today. It's been a very wet June in the Ohio River Valley. Uh, very wet, lots and lots of rain, uh, the river's high. Uh, today we have a soft, constant summer rain, it's just beautiful, I love to hear the rain out here on the porch, on the roof, uh, it's just a good day, it's just a really good day. Um, I haven't done anything yet, uh, today here it is almost noon as I'm recording this. So today... On our devotional, we will be reading from the book of Psalm, chapter 33, verses 18 through 22. Now, the devotional that I do these devotionals from is the three-minute devotional for men. Um, though I'm telling you, this, this is useful for everybody. I don't believe it's specific for men. I, I've yet to see that. In this devotional, it has verse 18 and 19, but verse 20, 21 and 22, I believe, needs to be included as well. So here we go. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our, for our heart shall rejoice in Him, because we have trusted in His holy name. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in Thee. The, in my study Bible, what it says about verse 18 and 19 is, Jehovah has a concern for his own people that is unique in comparison to other nations. Here, as in the previous verses, it is not only his knowledge, but also his activity that is in view to deliver his people and to keep them alive. Let's read what the devotional has to say here. I think this one's pretty good. God's attention and provision doesn't hinge on how well you pray. It's all too easy to think of God as a slot machine that demands certain practices in order to meet your needs. I preach against those who ascribe to and perpetuate the uh, word of faith and prosperity gospel, turning God into an ATM machine, a divine ATM machine meant to fulfill all your needs and desires. I preach against that. Let's see this here. Christians often run the risk of domesticating God demanding that he meet their needs and serve their purposes. Those who expect provision set God apart as holy and powerful, worthy of reverence and respect. You don't pray for God's presence in order to manipulate him for your purposes. Rather, you yield to his majestic power. Amen. I love this one. The psalmist then reminds you that God's love is unfailing. You don't fear a monstrous, angry deity. You serve a holy, all-powerful God who loves you deeply and won't fail you even if you have been unfaithful. As you rest in God's care for you, you'll find a constant, unmoving love that is deeply committed to you.
You know, I, I have to I have to admit I'm a bit taken back here by this devotional because in three paragraphs, in three paragraphs, it has clearly stated something that I have spent much time in my sermons and my videos discussing, uh, probably several hours worth all together. That our God is a God of love. That He's a powerful God. That His love is unmoving. I use the word unmeasurable. That we should yield to His will. Pray for God's will in our life, not our own. That God is not here to fulfill our every desire, but that God is there for us to change us and for to use us as his instrument to minister to others. You see, the problem with Christians who have turned God into this ATM machine, this slot machine, who call upon God to provide for their every will and desire, is that they are stuck in a materialistic world, they are living in the world, and they are of the world. You can't be of God and of the world. It's selfish. It's selfish to live that way. We as Christians should seek after God's will in our lives, not our own. God will protect us. God will guide us. God will provide for us, yes, He will provide for what we need in service to Him. We should put God first in our lives. I say this many times. And this is part of putting God first. I've said this many times, that whatever is first in your life is your God. God should be first. Proclaiming the gospel should be your number one priority in life. Not obtaining wealth, power, fame. No, proclaiming the gospel of Christ to the world. You know, I just got done watching a video by Pastor Paul Washer. Now, I used to watch quite a bit from him, and it's been a while, and I have to admit I've probably forgot quite a bit about the man himself. But I'll say, tell you this, though he is soft-spoken, he's a softer-spoken pastor than I am, it, it, his sermons are no less powerful. His sermons are indeed something every Christian should take the time to watch. Look up Paul Washer, Pastor Paul Washer. Look him up. He's a good pastor. And he, in this sermon, he talked about how Christians who put materialism, that put the world first in their life, are apostates. That Paul spread the gospel, that he began churches by proclaiming Christ crucified, not in, in the way he described it, not as a, a picture of community and please come join us and and with all the beautiful people and happiness and love and hugs and and yes we're to live yes you're supposed to live a lifestyle of love yes. Yes, that is true. But not at the expense of Christ crucified. That is what we preach. That is what we share. Christ crucified. Pastor Paul Washer, look him up. He's a good pastor. So what we can take away from this what we can take away, you and me, is that God's love is unmoving and unmeasurable, that He loves you, 
that we as Christians, we seek after God and His will, not our own. That when we have God's will revealed to us by God, that we then pursue that will to the glory of God. God is just and God is faithful and He will fulfill His promises to you. He will. Now there was one other thing I wanted to talk about in this devotional. I really wish that I could do these as short live streams. Um, I really wish that I could. Um, I'm, I've been thinking about doing them as uh, premieres so that there can still be a live chat function. Um, those of you who have made it this far, um, I'm really curious of what my viewers uh, have to say. If you would like to see these devotionals done as premieres, uh, I could do that. So that there's a live chat, I can communicate with you in real time while we together watch these uh, daily devotionals so put that in the comment section below and lastly something on more of a personal note so this has really been weighing heavily on my heart for several months um I haven't truly known exactly how to say this, and I'm not sure if this person is going to see it, but I had a very dear friend for some time, several months, we got close, uh, her name is Maya, and there was some misunderstandings, there was some things that I did and failed to do on my part that was hurtful. And there was feelings of abandonment on both sides, whether real or perceived. And I want to apologize to dear Maya. I realize that this apology is late. I do. Maya, I want you to know that I valued our friendship, that you meant a lot to me. That in you I saw the little sister I never had. And I'm truly sorry that I hurt you. That I upset you. That, and I understand you were going through some very serious things and it seemed that I just disappeared. And I'm sorry. I pray that you can forgive me. You and I both know that the whole situation is far more complex than that. But even in its entirety, I seek your forgiveness. I'm sorry. I apologize. I will now close in prayer. God, thank you that though you are all-powerful and infinitely holy, you think of me. Help me to know that you are God and that you love me and will care for me. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your love, your unwavering, unmoving, unmeasurable love for us. We pray that you instill in our hearts a deep desire for you to put you first in our lives to proclaim your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ crucified and risen. Heavenly Father, I pray that you use us, each of us, as your instrument to minister to others. That you show unto us how to seek your will and follow after you and not our own. To put aside materialism to put aside worldly things and to cast our eyes upon you. Lord God, I pray that you 
give each of us a forgiving heart and a heart that seeks forgiveness to those we have wronged. Lord God, I praise you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your saving grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God keep and bless you each and every day. Know that God fully knows and loves you. And He's calling you to Him always. When you walk with God, you are never alone. Our God is a God of love. God bless. I could fly away with you. 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 There'd be no place that I'd want to hide. There'd be no limits to where we could fly. There'd be no place that I'd want to hide. There'd be no limits to where we could fly.